This is the Dental Up Podcast, your daily source for insights from dentists and leaders in the industry. Brought to you by Keating Dental Lab, a full-service, award-winning dental lab that is here to add value to your dental practice. With high-quality restorations, friendly, reliable service, the best products, and prices, come experience the Keating difference. Visit KeatingDentalLab.com for details. Good morning, and welcome back to the Dental Lab Podcast. I'm Bob Brandon, your host and the general manager here at Keating Dental Lab. First, our thoughts and prayers go out to those suffering and hopefully now recovering from the devastating hurricane last week. You all be safe down there. Our weekend in hot, dry Southern California started out Friday afternoon with the sixth annual Strikers FC Golf Tournament. And the team here from Keating Dental Lab took sixth place with a legitimate non-cheating score of five under. And I think that would have won us about $17 million on the live golf circuit. And Friday night high school football saw modern day improve to 6-0 and with the Trinity League opening win at J. Sarah, 21-13. And the other big Friday night high school game in Southern California was at the Rose Bowl with UCLA running past Washington. Just kidding, all you Bruins fans. I know you're all past high school, but it was finally nice to see a stadium full of live human beings. And really nice to see a local business like Costco step up to Troy Aikman's challenge and help put butts in the seats. For those that didn't know, Costco had a great deal, four pack of tickets to a Bruins home football game for only $99. And Saturday was the Ohana Fest down at Doheny State Beach Park, and Eddie Vedder put on another fun and successful weekend. The headliner on Friday was Stevie Nicks, and by all accounts, she can still bring it. Saturday, we were fortunate enough to see Jack White and Eddie Vedder And all I can say is, wow, so lucky my wife and I were there to watch them live. And on Sunday, the Stryker boys went up into East L.A. and swept the day against their opponents, L.A. United. Five wins for Strikers and zero for Laufa, and Griff's team won 3-0. Today, we are again fortunate to hear the story of another fantastic VA dentist treating the real American heroes. We have Dr. Ginger Chan from the Chico, California Veterans Administration Dental Clinic. So here we go. Please welcome to the Dental Up Podcast, Dr. Ginger Chan. Good afternoon, Dr. Chan, and thank you for joining us on the Dental Up Podcast. How, how's your day going so far? Pretty well, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Brandon, for having me here. <laughs> so uh, h- how, many patients, how many patients did you uh, treat this morning? Oh, just three, but I just finished five fillings. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> fantastic. And that, I mean, that's comprehensive treatment. You guys treatment plan your patients for everything and are able to really treat them as an entire human being, which is fantastic. Yeah, Um, absolutely. So let me ask, going back to your dental school career, where'd you go to dental school and when did you graduate? Oh, so I went to the University of California in San Francisco and I went to school. I graduated in 2013. Excellent. And where'd you go to undergrad? Berkeley. Fantastic. Wow. That's brilliant. You are brilliant oh. <laughs> for, for those two <laughs> schools. <Wow. laughs> nope. Just the opportunity. Just <laughs> got the opportunity at the right time, right place at the right time. That's what it's always about. But it takes an awfully smart person to recognize that and to take advantage of the opportunity in front of them. And I applaud you for that. Those are two world-class institutions and phenomenal, phenomenal educators there that have obviously influenced you and and big, big mentors on your career. Yes, absolutely. I can't speak. I I get speechless talking about my mentors. They're just everything that I know and all of the opportunities I've had in life are because of all the wonderful mentors I've had. So it's, it's all of them really. <laughs> That's fantastic. And again, it's they're they're nurturing, educating the next generations of dental health providers like you. And, and so what was your first job like after graduating from UCSF? What did you do after that? Yeah, I went right into residency after UCSF. Our dental school had a lot of, they had each of the specialties. So for specialty training, they were really fantastic. But as as just for general dentistry, they kind of took all the interesting cases. So I thought it was really important to have a residency just to learn all the, just to practice more and have that exposure to a bigger scope of care. So I went to residency and then where, and where was the residency located? The VA in McClellan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. And was that a one-year program or a two-year? 
Yeah, it's a one-year program. A one -year it goes by program. really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last week we had two first-year residents that had just graduated past June, the University of Louisville and UCLA Dental School, and they're both now started with the Loma Linda, which is a local VA facility to us here yeah. in Southern California. So it'll be interesting. When, when did you begin working at the Chico? So right after residency, they actually offered me a job at the Reading VA. So okay. right place at the right time. And then, and so I was there for four and a half years and then I moved here to Chico three just over three years ago when we had opened this new building here excellent so you're are you northern California born and bred did you grow up in San uh, Francisco area yeah I did I was born right there near San Francisco so all of my schooling was in the Bay Area and I thought I was going to be there for my whole life but opportunity brought me up here and it's been wonderful just seeing a completely different population type and it's it's amazing <laughs> but yes northern california my whole life yeah the valley population is different but it's tremendously important to the state i mean not only are there a lot of veterans that have served our country but a big farming community and and i think if i'm not mistaken probably fewer dentists that are located on the coast and in the in the bay area in general so you you have your work cut out for you Oh yeah. <laughs> so can, can you tell, obviously without giving any names or anything, can you tell us about some of the, the more interesting cases you've, you've been involved with this past month? Because I know the, the, the veteran population has real needs and they are often more complex than the cases that uh, dentists and private practice are faced with. Yeah, absolutely. There's a this past month, I've actually done a lot of Sarah cases, just helping with, I call them full mouth reconstructions, just a lot of grinding. Everyone's been so stressed out, but veterans in particular, I feel like everyone's always grinding their teeth. So a lot of these kind of complex cases where we have to reopen the, the VDO and get them functional again, plus looking good. So there's a lot of those cases we've done this past month. Um, yeah, but I think there's been such a boom in technology with all this, with the digital technology, being able to kind of open up the video and checking these things digitally has been extremely helpful. Absolutely. Yeah, and, we, and we do the same here as well. Start from a digital scan and then do almost like a proposed, a virtual smile design opening video, reconstructing maxillary centrals to a more ideal working like the more ideal clinical crowd like than just kind of working backwards from there. Are you guys designing and milling yourselves on site? Yeah, yeah. The uh, we're just we're doing single units and some simpler bridges. We like to keep our bigger cases. We like to do it with lab technicians just to have that <laughs> have that expertise there and the coordination there. But yeah, that's we do a, a lot of on site milling. Definitely. Part. Oh, that's great. How long, so are you, are you doing your own designs or do you have a technician on site that takes the scan and designs the restoration that is in charge of the milling or are you and the other dentists in charge of that? Yeah, we're here at the Chico VA. We're a pretty small clinic. We just have two dentists, including myself, and we have three assistants. So we're pretty short staffed. It's so we take, we were directly involved in that design process, milling process, centering, all of that. <laughs> that is so cool. So are you milling mainly Emacs or are you doing also some zirconia? We're mostly doing Emacs now. We're just transitioning over to zirconia here. We're just starting that here. So that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a new world. I mean, the material, zirconia is fantastic and you can do longer span bridges and everything but yeah it, in terms of the material and then the centering it will behave differently than emacs for sure mm -hmm. but yeah that's that's very exciting i'm very excited for you and and, and everybody in chico and, and mostly for the patients because it's a wonderful service that you're able to provide going from prep to scan design to insertion are you doing this on the same day or is it a temporization and come back a couple of days later yeah, we, we try to do the same day. So our veterans, wow. I mean, it's first, it's such a privilege to be able to work with them. I used to say, well, wouldn't it be great if we had a celebrity in our chair? We could be like a celebrity dentist. But one day I realized like, who cares? In our chair, like literally every person who sits in our chair is a hero, it's an American hero. So That's what right. a privilege. 
And a lot of them, they do travel pretty far. There's in terms of like local VA, some people have to drive an hour, two hours, hundreds of miles just to get to our clinic. And so if we could help them do as much as they're wanting to do all within the same visit, it actually really helps their, their whole health and just all of it. So we, we try to, we try to have as efficient a procedure visit for them as possible. That's very smart and a great service by offering them same day dentistry so that they don't have to commute to because the Northern California, where you have the five and the 99 and there's not too many other major highways. So the commute time, I know the commute time can really add up for, for your patients. Yeah. A lot of them have a lot of back pain, a lot of nerve pains, and you you just don't want them to have to come back so many times. Right. Oh, that's awesome. I'm I'm very excited for you. And it's, it's it's a great service. And and I I'm I'm exactly like you. I, I've always called the veterans of our country the real American heroes. They're the ones that that made all the sacrifices, really changed changed their life so that we can be safe. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy that our American veterans have wonderful doctors take, like you taking care of them. Yeah, it's such a privilege. And I have I have a lot of veterans who I I try to thank them for their service. And they say, no one's ever told me that. Can you believe that? So it's, yeah, it, it moves me to tears when I think about it. So God bless them. They're so, so humble and so thankful and so grateful too for the dentist, for the dentistry, which, which you and your team provides. I don't think there's enough of that in our line of work. Just being thankful to have a good dentist that's willing to take care of you. I mean, that's, yeah. the, the veterans really do appreciate it. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the removable side of the Chico VA clinic and I'd say the more complex cases, fully edentulous cases that you've been treating, what's the workflow like for these types of cases? Oh, wow. The workflow. So everyone's in a hurry to get their denture. So I try to, I still do like a traditional five-step process. I mean, when I was in school, I worked with, I worked with Dr. Dillinger. That's the first set of dentures I ever did. And it was amazing because he did half the denture and I did the other half. And just watching his workflow, I thought, okay, one day I want to be just like him. I mean, it was magical watching him take an alginate. I mean, he just swiped that spatula over it once and it was perfect. No bubbles. (laughs) When we got the denture back, I mean, at the fitting, there was no adjustments. I called the patient a day later, a week later, a month later, a year later, he never needed an adjustment. I thought, okay, I'm just going to stick to however Dr. Dillon just does it. I'm going to do it that way. And so even now today, even with all these new materials, I still try to do a very traditional way with doing like a preliminary impression first and then doing all the other steps. And so starts there even at the initial exam, I do shade matching and the diagnostic impressions just to kind of get that going. And then I phase everything else after that. A lot of the troubles with our veterans here is that they have very atrophied bones. So that's that's kind of the the biggest thing whenever I see that, I just get so anxious, but the veterans, again, they're so appreciative and they're so understanding as well. And you take your time to explain to them, like, Hey, here are the challenges we have with your case. And they understand it. And they have a very good tolerance of this appliance and they work very closely with us to, to make sure that it works out optimally for them. Excellent. Tell us your technique for capturing vertical dimension, because that's a very important step for the number of cases that you and your team are doing. You guys are really nailing this step. It's a struggle for a lot of dentists, but a lot of our private practice customers in recording an accurate vertical dimension. How do you do it? Oh gosh, it's so tricky. So I still, I take a, I take a little pencil and I <laughs> mark a mark on their nose and on their chin and it's kind of funny. Everyone laughs at me for doing it. But I'm like, hey, that's what Dr. Dellen just does. That's... So that's what I do. And and then a few years ago, a lab technician here at the VA, he actually said, oh, well, you want to have them swallow and then bite. So that prevents them from overthinking their bite. And then we just go from there. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, would... the, nose, the nose to chin point, that is tried and true if that works. Yeah, mine's, it's still kind of weird. I, I think every case... Every case I get frustrated with, but um, it it just kind of works out. I, I don't know what else to say. I still consider myself a pretty new dentist. I'm not an expert in this at all, but it all just kind of works out if you stick with the basics you were taught in school. <laughs> no, definitely. And don't, don't stray too far and don't experiment until you've had probably a time to practice and 
and everything, but uh, no, you're, you're doing it. You're doing it right. You're doing it fantastic. And what about on any of the digital dentures? Have you, have you delved into that with, with Alex and Jim on a removable side? Are they, are we doing your cases in the, in the digital method? Yeah, I think lately half the cases have been with digital and half of them the traditional wax up. And one of the, the I think the thing that I really like most, especially in the summer, I decided in the summer I'm going to do digital dentures more just because the digital dentures, you don't have to worry about the warpage in this heat. Right. We have to mail these cases from Chico. It gets, there's weeks on end where it's 100 degrees. And by the time it gets down to Southern California, you, you've got this melted blob. So yeah. that's how I really like the digital dentures. That's, that's really helpful. That's a very but, smart approach. <laughs> And then with the other cases, when I had talked to Jim before, which Jim's so nice and way he talked me through the steps and what's possible and Alex also. So they taught me so much about what's possible with this and having to have enough clearance to use the, to use the material in the first place. So that was really important, making sure we have enough, just enough spacing uh, open for yeah. that yeah and every every little step i think when i did my first set with them i called them every time like hey what do i do next what do i do next like how do i do this differently and so the that communication has been the key all of it yeah it is working close together a close communication and problem solving that's the hallmark of this dentist laboratory relationship and it doesn't it doesn't happen by accident and and when I went upstairs and I see all the cases from the Chico VA and I see him on Alex's carts and he's calling you on all of these. And, but that's, that's how we get predictable and successful results. Yes, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the, the digital denture try-in phase. If you could describe what it looks like, how it handles in a patient's mouth, and then any changes that you need to make from that, kind of how you approach that. Hmm. The try-ins have mostly been really good. The great thing about it being this printed try-in is that the intaglio already fits pretty much like the final product. And so the patient really gets to really try it out. It's so much easier for checking like phonetics and the video just because it's already fitted so well to the soft tissues. And I think the first time we got it back, it was like, what is this? Why is this all white? And the yeah. assistants now still get kind of confused. Like, what is this? It looks so weird, but it's really it, nice. It does. And yeah. I, I know we're not a visual program, but if you could describe that, I mean, what the appearance is like, do you, do you have any difficulty distinguishing between the the pink and the white? Is there enough of a CEJ or a distinction, or is there something you'd like us to do differently? Oh, I think it's very clear. So it's it's really nice. And I just have to tell the veteran, hey, so this white part, it's going to be pink, but it's very, it's very clear where all the, the tubes outline is. Okay. So it looks really, really clear. Sometimes the, the denture comes back with these kind of white triangular lines. So, I mean, it's easy to ignore, even it's, it's easier for the patient to understand it more so than doing like the wax rim itself. So it's, it's pretty close to pretty close to the final product other than the, that base color. And I actually sometimes will give the try in to the patient after we've delivered the final product and they use it for a backup sometimes. So Definitely. it's, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a really nice thing to have. And okay. because it doesn't melt and it's all just this monolithic thing, they can, they can try it out for a week. Even if, if, if it's a particularly difficult case, they could take it with them, try it out for a week. And it's, it's really nice having. Yeah. To see how their joint connection. develops to the new video, especially for phonetics, opening the bite. Sometimes there's issues there as well, but yeah, it's a really, that's a great approach. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> And what, to happen. <laughs> <laughs> what about any adjustments to the try indenture? Like if you have to change the arrangement of the anterior six, or if we've opened up the bite too much, tell us how you're making those adjustments and communicating those changes into the final prosthesis. Oh yeah. So if it's too tall, I'll just grind the teeth down. And then I actually recently had a case where. Just an acrylic I, burr, right? 
Yeah, just a little bit Very, very, very simple. Much neater than use changing the wax. And then I think one time I did have one that was slightly opened on one side. So what I did there, I just took some blue mousse and I redid the impression. I generally actually like using aloe wax to take my bright registrations, but with the heat, I've kind of had to transition over to using blue mousse instead. So I just use a blue mousse like here, remount this area. And I actually trust it so much. Like the work you guys give back to me, I trust it so much. I kind of, sometimes I'll skip the second try and if it's a fairly straightforward edition. So, so that's how I do that. And then sometimes if I have to have like let's say the teeth need to be flared out a certain angle like sometimes i'll try to use my acrylic burr adjust it to the right flare or i'll use like a marker to draw on it i don't think i've had to do that yet but that that's something in the toolbox and other yeah, if it's really often i just i say okay move it back one millimeter so i make little specifications like that and i always get exactly what i want back so <laughs> i guess oh, that's cool what about a, a canted smile? Have you had to deal deal with that in a, in a full arch prosthesis? Because that can be tricky. Yeah, that actually happens to me all the time. You think that I would make those modifications by now, but mine is usually slightly canted. And it's tricky. A lot of these veterans have had facial damage or they have like nerve paralysis. So it is hard to get the cant right sometimes. I think for that, I just kind of draw on the teeth or I'll, I'll say like, oh, tweak it to this new midline here. I think I usually just put another layer of wax or I think one time what I did was I took composite and I built it onto the try-in. I think that that's, helps too. That's the, yeah, the case I was referring to because that was a very... It was a very neat and useful technique because what we did, you lengthened, I think you lengthened three teeth on the, on the right yeah. side. And what we did was we just put it back, we rescanned the prosthesis and then we can superimpose the, the new scan with your additions onto the first design. And then that allows us to, to see it perfectly on how much we need to lengthen in the final design. Oh, that's great. I forgot I had done that. I think I did that once, forgot. But good. That that's a great reminder. I'll, I'll use that it, again in the future. It was perfect technique. What you did was perfect. We have some customers that'll subtract a little on one side, add a little on the other. They're kind of drawing arrows and but then what we do is we'll wax it by hand, the additions onto the teeth. But so you did it in composite, you did it perfect to where the smile line was corrected in the patient's mouth, which is always better because when we're doing it, it could be a guess, but it's more accurate than it's not. What you did was perfect. I loved it. Yeah, I like doing that. Again, I, I'd hate to have them come back in for a second try in and it's like, hey, let's do this right now. And it's just the clearest way of communication, I think, just showing exactly what we need. Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs> Excellent. So before we wrap up, I have two more questions and they're important and they kind of go directly to you as a human being and a dentist. You've been out of school now for 10 years. What advice would you have for, for a new dentist that is just embarking on their career? Oh, <laughs> Oh, it's hard to say. I feel like I feel like I'm still a new dentist trying to figure things out. <laughs> I'll give the advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give the advice that my mentor, Dr. Atkinson, had given me. He said, never be complacent. And I kind of modified that. I said, Well, it's important to be content and thankful for for what what you have, everyone around you, but also not being complacent. You want to keep elevating yourself and learning Definitely. more things. Oh, keeping your mind open and just keeping your mind open is so important. I mean like with Alex and Jim, just every time I really defer to their expertise for things. And so I think that's really important. And I I also defer a lot of my decisions to my assistants as well. So it's it's a real team effort. And I think that that's part of just not being complacent, keeping. Definitely. No dentist is an island onto themselves. It is his, a team approach to successful treatment. And you're wise enough and you're experienced enough that you're embracing this in your treatment decisions. And that's very smart. And then the last question is, I know that there's long hours at the VA and you're seeing a lot of really complex patients that are involved and you take the time to talk to them and get to know them as an individual. What do you like to do in your free time? Gardening. My, my husband and I actually have this life goal to look at all, to go visit every national park in oh, America. Cool. So <laughs> we like to take some time to do that and gardening, just 
time to ourselves that isn't about teeth. <laughs> yeah, very peaceful life choices, going out and exploring nature. There, our country has a lot to offer with the national park system and gardening is tremendously peaceful. I enjoy that as well. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. Champ, thank you so much. Thank you for all of your efforts in treating the real American heroes. You know, the veterans of the Central Valley sincerely appreciate you and your wisdom and all your efforts and everybody at the team of the Chico Veterans Administration Dental Clinic. I just want to thank you on behalf of everybody here at Keating Dental Lab for all the wonderful things you do for us. Well, I thank you so much for having me on here and thank you for all of everything I've learned from Keating, all the wonderful work you guys do. So thank you so much. Well, if we can ever be of assistance, you know how to find us. We're always here for you and your patients and your team there. So anything you need from us, please don't hesitate to, to reach out. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much, Dr. Chan. Have a wonderful afternoon. Be well. And again, on behalf of everyone here at Keating, we thank you for all you do. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Dental Up Podcast, your daily source for insights from dentists and leaders in the industry. This episode is sponsored by Keating Dental Lab, here to add value to your dental practice with high quality restorations, friendly, reliable service, the best products and prices. Come experience the Keating difference. Visit KeatingDentalLab.com for details.